Good afternoon guys, welcome to the second movie on the 5 HP 18 rebuild. Uh, you see my 5 HP 18 gearbox housing right there. I sanded it lightly, uh, I degreased it and I painted it nice and uh, silver, looks new. Uh, I'm gonna go over the parts real quick in this movie before I start the rebuild. First thing you see here is valve body gaskets. On the 5 HP 18 you have two types of valve body gasket. The later model is the gasket that has the cutouts that you see right here. The early model valve body gasket is a valve body gasket with only one cutout. As you can see there is one cutout right here and there is two cutouts on this later model gasket. Depending on the valve body and the exact version you have you need to use either the early or the later one but I have heard although I cannot confirm this that you can always use the later one regardless of the type of valve body that you have. The second thing I want to go over is the brake band and the molded rubber pistons. Notorious on uh, uh, these uh, ZF5 HP gearboxes are the molded rubber pistons. On the 5 HP 24, which is the bigger brother of the 5 HP 18, you have a molded rubber piston that you see right here and you have it on your reverse drum and that piston is known to wear out. What happens is, here you have the metal surface of the piston then you have the rubber right here and the rubber right there that seals the piston. And what happens on the 5 HP 24 is that the rubber cracks and wears out. You get fluid leaks through your piston and you lose pressure in your reverse gear. Theoretically, uh, any, molded, any molded rubber piston can, uh, can have uh, those symptoms. On the 5 HP 18 they are actually pretty reliable. Uh, it doesn't happen often that the molded rubber pistons fail. But if you're doing a full rebuild you should replace them anyway because they're not that expensive. And it guarantees that you have uh, nice quality new parts that will last long. You can see that this is a double sided uh, um, or an inner and outer molded rubber piston. And then there's also uh, the molded rubber piston that you see right here which only has molded rubber on the inside. The outside is metal. When rebuilding your 5HP18 and ordering parts you may have noted that there are two brake bands that you can buy. There is a narrow brake band which is about this uh, uh, this wide and then there's the bigger brake, ba brake band which is this one. If you have a 528, a 525 turbo diesel or a 530 V8 you will always have the thicker brake band. If you have a smaller engine 525 and 50 or 520 it may be so that you have the uh, that narrow brake band. I do not know what will happen if you put the wide brake band in a lighter application. It could work, it could be so that the uh, uh, the transmission computer will automatically adapt uh, knowing that the, uh, the brake band grabs faster. It can also cause vague shift complaints as your transmission computer is probably not used to having such uh, high, higher gripping power. Interesting, if we compare the brake band to the old brake band that I dismantled in the previous movie, we see that there is almost no wear on the old brake band. You do see some discolorment, but that's because it's soaked with ATF for uh, a few years and because it's been up to temperature. Uh, but uh, if you look closely right here, it may not, you may not be able to see it on, uh, on the movie. You see that the numbers are still intact, same here. Uh, and roughly uh, looking with my eye, I see a similar thickness. I can actually get my caliper gauge. And we can do a rough measurement on old versus new. Uh, mind you, this uh, old brake band is not that old. It's about six, seven years old and it's done about 200,000 kilometers. So that's, that's not even uh, uh, that incredible. If we uh, take the caliper gauge and we measure the old one, roughly, we measure a thickness of 1.59, so let's say 1.6 millimeter. If we then measure the new one, we measure 1.6 millimeter. So we lost Actually, we, we actually measured the same, but we could say that we lost um, uh, 0 0.01 millimeter on this brake band, which is of course absolutely negligible. This brake band is still usable. I could actually fit this brake band again, but since I ordered a new one anyway, I'm just going to fit a new one. The other parts that you need for your uh, gearbox project are all in the CF box. I ordered everything brand new. You do not necessarily have to use EF. I can understand that you think you would, uh, you would want to keep it original, but there's many uh, quality aftermarkets brand, mainly from the Americas, that have uh, uh, good quality parts. Uh, Allomatic is an example, uh, Ray Bestos is another example, uh, Precision International, 
I would take any of those brands over ZF if the ZF kit would no longer be uh, available. And uh, looking at the complete ZF kit that I have, you see multiple plastic bags with uh, rubber seals uh, and uh, a shaft seal here, a shaft seal there and other rubber seals that are for your different drums and your different uh, clutches. Here's some plugs and the O-rings for your connector through the valve body, uh, through the transmission housing, sorry. Here's the gasket that you need on your, uh, on your pan, on your oil pan. Most interesting part is of course the clutch plates. Some of you may now notice, where are your steels? Uh, answer is pretty simple, since I dismantled a fully working transmission without any issue and since I didn't see any uh, strange markings on the steels, I'm just going to reuse the steels. If you buy a transmission from a, a breaker yard and you have no idea on its past, I would recommend getting new steels. If you are overhauling a transmission that did function and didn't really have major issues, I would say you could reuse the steels. So the only thing you see here is the frictions, an original ZF friction kit. And I've got some frictions left from my previous rebuild. Reason why I have these frictions left is probably because this kit is probably also suitable for the 5HP19, which does not have a brake band, but instead it has an extra friction pack. So that's why you can be, uh, that's why you can have some leftover frictions. If you have a light duty 5HP18, it is also possible that your clutches take less frictions. The, the early 5HP18 model were, uh, had two variants, light duty, heavy duty. Heavy duty would be the 525 TDS and uh, the 530 and 730 V8. Light duty would be 520i and 525i without uh, vanos. Those 5HP18s have one less steel and one less friction in every clutch pack, meaning that the transmission can handle less torque. The more clutches and steels you stack, the more torque you can put through the clutch. Uh, so if you have leftover clutches, not necessarily a problem. You should just rebuild your transmission as it comes out. All right, in the final part of the movie, I'm going to take the transmission casing and I'm going to take a special tool that, uh, that I made. Actually, my father made it and I'll show you uh, what you need to use it for. Right here, we have our freshly painted transmission housing. You can see the way it looked when it came out of the car and you can uh, see if I just would put it, if I put it on its feet for a second, you can see what the housing looks after being lightly sanded, degreased and painted. So it looks a lot better and its transmission will actually start, uh, will, will actually look like new and function like new. All right, on the upper, uh, in the upper uh, area of the video, I'm going to point out, point it out to you. You see a circlip and you see a metal plate and this is actually a, a protective cap and uh, above this cap you have your actuation of your brake band. Uh, whenever the transmission needs to use a brake band, fluid is applied to a pin, the pin will push upwards and will push the brake band against another uh, pin and that's how the brake band gets its tension. You need to, if necessary, you need to adjust uh, the clearance on this uh, mechanism. But usually, if you don't have any big complaints with your transmission, you can just fit a new brake band and forget about it. But if you've taken this part apart and if you've replaced the seals on the little plate behind this, you will want to measure uh, the, pl the, the, the end clearance or the play that you have. Uh, to do so, ZF of course has many different uh, and expensive tools, but uh, we came up with a very simple tool to do this at home. What you see right here is the steel plate. We welded a nut on the steel plate on the top and, uh, top and on the bottom. And right here you just see some, uh, uh, some long bolts. And uh, what we do with this tool is we position this tool like... We position this tool like this on the threads that are already in the gearbox. And the moment we have, uh, the, moment we have the mechanism ready... Let me just tilt over the gearbox. The moment we have the mechanism ready, the only thing we do is apply uh, uh, is, uh, uh, screw the bolt towards the metal plate, it will start pushing the mechanism, at some point it will stop. At that point we put a, uh, uh, a dial indicator uh, or a, a clock right on the bolt, we un unscrew the bolt and as we feel that there is no longer any, uh, any tension on the brake band, we measure the exact distance that we traveled. And we can compare this with the original ZF numbers, which you will see in my next movie when I'm actually re rebuilding. And that's how we make sure that we have properly uh, aligned the brake band mechanism. Finally, to give you uh, more of an idea of what we're going to be doing in the next movie, right here you see my F-drum. Uh, not only do I want to replace the frictions and some uh, seals that are on the, uh, around the F-drum, I also want to dismantle the piston, uh, inspect the piston and the drum, 
put new uh, seals on the piston or if it's a molded piston I want to press in the other uh, molded piston uh, and then I want to rebuild everything again. Now removing the circlip steels and frictions is easy I've shown this in a different movie but how do you get that spring out if you have the retainers right here I cannot take this retainer out because I have spring pressure so the retainers are going to stay in place what I do is I use a small hydraulic press which I have right here in my garage I take the race of an industrial bearing which I get from scrapyards or uh, uh, manu uh, manufacturers that have uh, leftover uh, old bearings I put the race of the bearing right here on the spring and now I use a metal plate or I use a large uh, pressing tool to put a little bit of pressure on the spring so that when the spring goes in I can take the retainers out with small pincers and then when I let go of the pressure the spring comes completely free and I can just take out the spring by hand but more about this method in the next movie where I will actually show you how to do this and how to rebuild a uh, drum like this that's it for today. Here's another look at the nice uh, freshly painted transmission housing. Next movie is going to be about rebuilding all of those drums, rebuilding all of those clutches and pistons and installing them in the transmission. I think in about a week I'll start rebuilding it and uh, putting it on video and then I, I'm going to try within two weeks to have that video online. See you guys later.